Welcome back to Stuff Around the House. My name is Ryan, and today we are going to be talking about busy stores, long lines, and empty shelves. Thursday, March 12th, 2020. Today was a day that got kind of crazy. We lost another roughly 2,000 points on the stock market, and all sorts of things started to close. Uh, Disneyland closed. I didn't see that coming right away anyway. Uh, lots of businesses are making changes to the way they operate. Uh, here in Des Moines, a couple of the school systems actually have closed for the remainder of the month. So, what do you do when all of those things happen? Well, I guess you go to the store and you buy more toilet paper. But, in this case, there was no more toilet paper for people to buy. What they do now is they move on to the other things that they think they need, and some of these things made sense, and some of them didn't make sense, and we'll talk about why some of those things existed. I'm going to start showing you some videos and can't wait to tell you about it. This was Costco's gas station at approximately 5.30 tonight. There was five, six cars in every single line. For a Thursday night, this isn't normal. Something wasn't right. Normally, Costco's really good at keeping everything full, but you're going to notice most of these doors are either half empty or completely empty in some cases. I expect Costco to be busy, but this was insane, even if it was Christmas. There was about 35 people in this line, and there was 35 people in the line to the left of us. And then there was a third line that was on the other side of them, and there was a good 20 or so people in that line too and the line just kept on growing it was insane after costco like a big dumb idiot that i am i went over to walmart and it was even worse i'm going to show you this still shot for just a couple of minutes while i talk because all of my video clips are relatively short so it would get kind of choppy if I keep doing it like that. So bear with me. I'm going to show you more video. It's going to happen soon. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at several different areas and I'll probably pause a little bit so that we can talk about each one. And we're going to see what things really sold out that aren't surprising, what things sold out that are surprising, and then what hasn't sold out and what that could mean. So let's go ahead and let's jump back into the video and we'll talk about these different areas. The canned food section really took a beating, but as you can see, if you still want a can of green beans, you can get them. But the other thing that's worth noting in this video, and I switched over to the still frame so that I can talk and blabber and things like that, it's hard to see, but the salad dressing is on the right hand side of the screen and it was pretty well picked over. Again, you could still get a bottle of salad dressing, but it was a little crazy to see how much of it was sold. This one was incredibly stupid. I have no idea why people are going so crazy for ketchup and mustard. Now, I understand, like, the mayo off to the right, why people would want to buy mayo. You could make cheese and mayonnaise sandwiches, you could make pasta salads, you, you could do a lot of things with mayo that would actually help kind of create a meal. But ketchup? I'm sorry, I'm not feeling it. I think the ketchup was a total waste of time. I'm sure Heinz and all of the other companies that make it are very pleased to have sold this much ketchup, but it doesn't make any sense. Uh, same with mustard. It, that's a complete waste. Here we're in the canned fruit aisle, and this one makes a lot more sense. It's shelf-stable, it's got some nutritional value to it. As you can see, the shelves are pretty well picked over, but you could still get some fruit, you just might not get the fruit that you want. This is something I would suggest if you're trying to build kind of a little stockpile of things to get you by. Canned fruit, definitely on the list, and we weren't the only ones that thought that because all of these shelves are pretty well empty. In this one, we have the stovetop stuffing, the dried mashed potatoes, which make no sense. And then we move on to some things that do make more sense. And that's our pasta sauces and Alfredo sauces, basically, you know, jarred sauces. 
This is also the aisle where we have our ramen noodles. These make sense because, well, they're easy to make. And then if we zoom across here, we have the actual pasta and it is totally beat up. So let's talk about why some of these things make sense and let's talk about why some of them don't. Stovetop stuffing and freeze-dried mashed potatoes make no sense. These are items that take multiple ingredients to prepare. You have to have butter and milk. And if we were in a real food shortage, we wouldn't have butter and milk to use in the stovetop stuffing or the uh, mashed potatoes. Now, what does make more sense, though, is when we had the pasta sauces. They're in a jar. They'll last, you know, quite a while. And then you have the actual pasta itself. That makes sense. You could leave that in your cupboard for a year and it would be fine. These are smart buys because even if we don't have a food shortage, these are things that will last in your cabinet. You can easily use them. But if we had a real food shortage, those things that require multiple ingredients, they become more difficult to make. The ramen noodles, that's an easy one. You just add water. They make lots of sense. They're super cheap. And of course, that's the reason why they're all sold out. I'm pleased to say that people are making more sense with some of these shopping decisions. This is the Chef Boyardee area. And then we have a little shot of the macaroni and cheese. Sorry, I didn't get a great picture of it. And then the rice section. So why are these important? Chef Boyardee, that will last forever. I actually don't know that, but I know it will last longer than I do. Then you have macaroni and cheese. That area was not all that sold out, and again, makes perfect sense, because that goes back to what we were talking about before with the multiple ingredients. You've got to have milk and butter to put in with your pasta and cheese sauce mixture that comes with the macaroni and cheese. Good job, people. Don't get the macaroni and cheese if you think we're going to be in a long-run shortage. Now, the rice, of course, is extremely smart because it's filling. It's not really all that nutritional, but it's not bad for you either. But it's really easy to prepare. All you need is heat, water, and then the rice. Good job, everybody. These all made sense. I couldn't pass up going through the toilet paper aisle because we've heard so much about how toilet paper is selling out and as you can see in this store it's absolutely sold out. There are a couple of rolls on that second shelf but those are actually paper towels. That was not toilet paper. These shelves were wiped absolutely clean and I just realized I made a little pun so yay me. Alright, then we had to go over to the cleaning section and you'll see that most of the cleaning stuff that actually matters has been picked over pretty well. And then the bleach area was kind of the same. It was pretty bare. You could still get a bottle of bleach if you wanted, but there wasn't a lot of it. The frozen pizzas being sold out made a lot of sense. We have no risk of losing electricity, and they, again, don't require additional ingredients. So this makes sense. If you're wondering what this all means, are we really in a crisis or are people just kind of getting worked up? Well, I think I can answer that question for you at the moment. Here is the liquor aisle. And the reason why the liquor aisle is significant is if we were in a true long-term crisis, the liquor section would be wiped out. If things get really bad, you double check me on this and feel free to call me out if you think I'm wrong. But if we were in a true emergency, there would be no beer left on the shelf, there would be no wine left on the shelf, there would be no tequila or vodka or whatever it is. So basically what I think this means is right now we are just in a scare mode. People are not sure what to think because we've never gone through anything like this. So we're stocking up on toilet paper doesn't make a lot of sense, but we're stocking up on it. And then we're stocking up on some other things that do make sense, and that was things like your pastas, pasta sauces, your canned goods and rice and things like that. But if you want to know when things are really going to go south, keep an eye on the liquor aisle. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's little episode. And I beg you, please, click on that share and like and subscribe button. 
It really helps me out. I love seeing it when people subscribe, so smash that subscribe button, and I look forward to bringing you the next video.